already given and then you come and listen to the technical okay so let's quickly look at the previous lecture that introduced the category of topical spaces that we call top and the continuous maps topical spaces are objects of this category continuous maps are arrows of this category now if you know the definition of a topical space which is a pair x comma t this x is called the set of points of the topical space and t is called topology on that set and there are some conditions which such a set has to satisfy the set of subsets t is a set of subsets of x x can be any set it's allowed to be empty but for t it is compulsory that empty set should belong to t all of x should belong to t all union and t is closed under arbitrary unions and finite intersections so this is what makes a topological space and a continuous map from one topological space to another is a map first of all of the underlying sets moreover it is such that inverse image of any element of t prime is an element of t elements of the topology are called open sets so inverse image of any open set should be open that makes the map continuous now you already know metric spaces so there is a topological space associated to a metric space because in a metric space you know what's an open set namely it should contain a ball around each of its points this condition is vacuously satisfied by the empty subset so empty subset has to be open it's satisfied by everything so everything so all of x is open etc etc and you know that in topological spaces a continuous map can be defined in many ways there is an epsilon delta definition or there is convergent sequence definition that image of a convergent sequence should be a convergent sequence with the image of the limit point being its limit point and then this topology definition that inverse image of open set is open is exactly equivalent to those other things therefore corresponding to any metric space we have a topological space whose set of points is the same and whose open sets are the open sets defined by the metric so this is something already familiar to you in these special cases what is a topological space now given any set there are two topologies on it one is the biggest topology where t is biggest and second is the smallest topology where t is the smallest possible this is a discrete topology every subset is open this is an indiscrete topology only empty and everything are open so to test you is there a set which is both discrete and indiscrete i asked you this question yesterday so tell me now rapidly what's a topological space which is both discrete and indiscrete yeah somebody answer a singleton set anything else empty set sir correct and how many singleton topological spaces are there uncountably many well as many as you want they don't form a set okay for every set there is a singleton uh, set namely the set whose only member is that set and since there is no set of all sets there is no set of all singleton sets therefore talking of its cardinality etc etc is dangerous okay but a singleton set is unique up to a unique isomorphism given any two singleton sets there is a unique bijection between them and between the two singleton topological spaces that bijection is continuous and its inverse is continuous meaning it's homeomorphism 
so we introduced this special name of homeomorphism for an isomorphism in this category isomorphism simply means it should have two sided inverse so we verified this is a category this involved composition and its associativity and the identity arrow for each object so this was all there in topological spaces so this was fine the identity map of sets from the discrete space to indiscrete was continuous the opposite way need not be so of course if x is empty or singleton then this is of this can i spot so home you are now we motivated uh, talking of topological space instead of metric space even when you are metric space by saying that for many aspects of metric spaces the aspects which matter have to do with open sets but there are some other aspects where metric matters such as completeness so for example the open interval 0 1 is homeomorphic to the real line but as a metric space the open interval 0 1 with its euclidean metric is not complete while the real line with the euclidean metric is complete so for certain things metric matters for most other things well who am i to say most other things for many other things which are of interest only the topology matters so here was the question does the category of topological spaces has an initial object and the empty space was the initial object and any singleton was the terminal object or final object which is unique up to unique isomorphism therefore i call it d final object it's not unique at all then why call it d because it's unique up to unique isomorphism that's why after that we introduce products so this is something in any category the definition given any two objects in a category their product is a triple there is some object in the category there is an arrow to x and there is an arrow to y co product is also similar triple but their universal properties are different the universal property of product is from the product when i take these two maps arrows and given any other object with arrows to each there exists a unique arrow y as the product and in the case of topological spaces or sets we told you how to define h because where to send small w well uh, wherever it goes it further goes to fx this way and g sorry fw this way and gw this way therefore the we should map to the pair fw gw so that is the map w maps to fw gw now this is okay as sets but now you want to give topology Okay, which makes these two maps continuous and will make H continuous. So we said if P1 is to be continuous, inverse image of any open set here has to be open. Declare those to be open in X cross Y. All inverse images of open sets here, declare them to be open. Similarly, all inverse images of open sets in Y, declare them to be open. So now you have lots of open sets. Question: Is that a topology? Well, it may not be because you still need arbitrary unions and finite intersections. So put them in, put them in by hand, and now you have your topology. So that is the topology called product topology, where any open set is an arbitrary union of finite intersections of sets of the type X cross V and U cross Y. Okay. So this is what we explained as the product topology. And I asked you, what will it be if U is empty? So then that's blah blah blah. Here was a picture. This was X and this was Y, and U cross Y looked like this strip. V cross X looked like this strip. Their intersection is U cross V. This intersection is U cross V. And then I asked you, as an exercise, that. if on the same set we have given plenty of topologies these are all subsets of the power set of x take their intersection and i asked you to show that's again a topology so that is the smallest topology okay. or what should i say that is the largest topology contained in all the tis okay. so uh, that's how you do this uh 
uh, after this products we went to co products for co products the maps are in the opposite direction and now we have to give a recipe and the universal property so recipe is to make the co product or disjoint union of two topological spaces take the set which is a disjoint union and now you want to put a topology there is a pink set called z you want to know when it is open but such a subset of x disjoint union y is made up of z intersection x and z intersection y is the union of two things some part is here some part is there both those parts should be open this part should be open with respect to the topology on x this part should be open with respect to the topology on y then you say z is open this is the definition of topology and it has a universal property requisite universal property okay so you are given homework that check that this is indeed a topological space and these maps are continuous both these maps are continuous and this has a universal property that given any w and one map from x and one map into y the resulting map from here there is a unique sectoric map because this is sectoric coproduct you only have to check that that map is continuous okay so we ran out of time yesterday so let me finish one little point which i like to which i would i like to include yesterday but did not okay so this is the point for which i should change my color if x i i belong to i is a family of topological spaces we have product x i i belonging to i and a p i going from this product to individual x i this is their product how do i make it recipe is simple recipe take the set as a set it's only a product okay now put topology as before meaning take any ui in open in xi and now take pi inverse of ui so pi inverse of ui is going to be the product of ui with all other factors all other factors are kept as it is and the ith component has to be in ui now these if these were finitely many then it would have looked like this but of course i am not saying what kind of set is this indexing set i'll have this kind of a set okay now take take all arbitrary unions of finite intersections of such pi inverse ui where i varies over i and ui varies over open subsets of x i so remember the intersections are only finite intersections and unions are arbitrary okay and these are the open subsets these are the basic open subsets so these are the open subsets.
So that is the that makes this topical space. My question to you, and now what is this PI? PI is the projection. The projection. So this construction is word by word the same as the binary product. You just don't be afraid that I in the set index i instead of taking two values one and two is now taking values in some arbitrary set i but of course there is something yes i remember you guys are very fond of empty sets so let me ask question if i equal to empty set what is the product Okay, somebody care to answer? This I is empty set. So what is the product of the empty family of topical spaces? Somebody cares to answer? Anandu Mohan, you want to answer? Ankit, you want to answer? Any of you guys, now there are 31 of you, but not all our students. 31 is including your organizers, tutor. Okay. Yeah, so what is the product? Okay, so this question is being left to you as homework. Is it empty? Uh, product of X size empty. What's your name? Uh, Sadashu Purani. Ha, Sadashu, you are brave. I like you are trying it. So I am, but your answer is not correct. Okay. Okay. Sir, is so, it whole? Is it what? A whole is space. Who, who is who is the question? Who is the person talking now? Whole space. Who said this? Sir Anuj. Sir. Anuj. Anuj. What whole space are you talking about? Uh, is there some whole space there? There's no space there. You see the the indexing set is empty. So you have not been given any topical space at all. You are not given any topical space at all, and now you are being asked what's the product of those. So you just have to think straight, logically. Whatever is the product, what is the universal property it has? So if some space Z has a map to each Xi, then there should exist a unique map to the product. Making this common. So is there any Xi given to you? No, no, empty family, there is no Xi given to you. No, sir. No. So this data is vacuously there because for you give me the XI, I'll give you the map, and you are not giving me XI, I'm not giving you any maps. So this is already there. This projection, therefore, I don't have to, I have to only define it for this projection for every I in I. But there is no small I, therefore, I don't have to define anything here either. So now, I don't have to give this map, I don't have to give this map, but there should exist a unique map from Z to here. So all that this says is Z has a unique map to the product. So what is a topical space such that any Z has a unique map to it? Empty Z. No. Only empty set has a map to empty set. Sir, no other set has a map one. to empty set. Yeah, is that clear? There's only one so set, so that every set has a unique map to it, and that set is singleton set. Somebody got it? Yeah? Any yes, set sir. has a unique map to singleton set. Who, who was talking just now? Anuj? Yes, sir. Ah. Anuj, is it clear to you? Given any set, it has a unique map to singleton set, yeah? Yes, sir. Let's take the singleton set whose only element is, let's say, 10. 
then you send everything to 10. That is a unique map any set has to this set. You can take a singleton set whose only element is anything of your choice. All singleton sets are isomorphic. Okay. So you see, that's why I'm saying that you guys, I don't know how to how many of you my message has reached. It is clear to me on teaching you for a week that you guys need to brush up your basics of set theory. Sets and maps is where your weakness begins. Hmm? It's my job as your teacher to help you become stronger in mathematics and to tell you where your attention needs to be focused. So on talking with you guys, it's clear to me that for many of you, sets are still a problem. And so please go on focusing on such basic issues like what's union, what's intersection, what's inverse image, what's empty set, and what's empty set is the one which is taking maximum wickets. Anything having to do with empty set, and then you guys are at C. So in the beginning, I was blaming Simmons, but one should not blame these foreigners. After all, they come from a culture where they did not have empty set and they did not have zero. Yeah. So it's understandable if their textbooks don't have zero, don't have empty set for many, many centuries. Yeah. We have no such excuse. India is where zero empty set, all such notions originated. And then, except of course, in CRT, just copies what your Americans do, perhaps that's the reason. Many. So uh, you guys have no excuse for not being very solid on things like zero, empty set, singleton set, math. Huh? So everybody is urged to pay attention. Now that you have these videos, go back, watch it, till you very confidently, rapidly answer such questions. OK. So the next issue in infinite families is co-product. So again, I have I belonging to I, X, I, and this time the maps J are from J, I, goes from X, I into this co-product. So once again, the recipe is exactly the same. Recipe, same as for a binary co-product. X is on union Y. Okay? And the J, X, J, Y. Same recipe. And therefore, now we are back to the question. Question. I equal to MT. What is the MT co-product? Yeah, somebody cares to describe the empty co-product and be brave. Huh? You should not try to hide your ignorance from your teachers because then it will it's like hiding your illness from your doctor. Doesn't help. Or you have a legal problem, you go to a lawyer and you don't want to tell all the facts to the lawyer, then he is not going to be able to help you. So be brave and don't try to hide your ignorance from your teachers and I'll give the answer. So empty. So what is that here? Correct. Correct. So whosoever answered this, what's your name? Sonakshi, sir. Okay. So Sonakshi, you are right. And the answer is that this is going to be the empty co-product co is going to be the empty topological space. Okay. And now I have to give the map Ji from each Xi to MT. Wow, how can I give a map from any Xi to MT except for him? But then there is no I given to you. So nothing to be given. Nothing is to be given because there is no Xi at all. Okay, because I is empty. There doesn't exist any small I, so I am not... 
I don't have to provide you with this map. You are only told for every small I provide me with such a map. But yeah, but since you have not been provided with any small I at all, there is no job to be done. It's already done. Yeah. Okay. So with that, we are nearly, you know, finished half an hour just revising last time. But is it worth it? Or yeah, this again, you know, I don't belong to the video jamana. Perhaps revising the last lecture is a useless exercise since you guys can watch the video or do you think it's useful to revise the previous lecture? Give me oral feedback. You know, this revision of previous lecture is perhaps useless since you can go and watch the video. No, sir. No, and one should just straight go on lecturing because after all you can uh, slow down fast forward, watch again. So what is the point in lecturing slowly? Tell me. Somebody make an argument. You guys are supposed to be able to argue. So tell me, is there any point in my lecturing slowly or should I lecture like what your speed I want and you can slowly watch the video? Which way? So slowly lecturing. And tell me what's the point in that? Because uh, the motive of live lectures is to that we can question if we have something uh, if we have some problem in the lecture right. and in so, the videos we can't question the... that is right yeah i agree with you but this argument becomes valid if you guys indeed take the opportunity to question if you guys are going to remain silent then you know the teacher will start wondering that now nah, then why is this live I might as well video record all my lectures and put them on the website. Yeah. So your argument is correct, but provided you take advantage of the slow lecturing by asking questions, which also means that the teacher can ask you questions. Is it okay I ask you questions? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. sir. Yes. Now, you know, I am not a machine and you are not a machine. So is it okay if I ask for your names when you reply? Because some students don't want their name to be known. I don't know why. You know, after all, all mathematicians form a community and you should have your own recognition there. So don't be afraid of telling your name. Yeah. And we should ask because then i can say hey, like like you answered last time this is like that it's like the doctor needs to know the name of his patient right because patients have history and then you know oh this patient often gets this so this medicine works best on him and so on so on that's why there's name okay otherwise it's like a book lots of copies are printed the author does not know who bought the copy and uh, the reader can read it at his own speed. Turn the page backwards, turn the page forwards, jump, go anywhere. And so live lectures where you can interact, fulfill a different role from such ready-made uh, notes or video lectures with no interaction at all, provided both sides, both the teachers and the students try to take advantage of the interactive possibility. That's why I've been trying to interact, but there is no sound of clapping with one hand. So if I try to interact, you also have to be interactive only then this is going to work. Okay, so now let's come to the new material for today. The new material for today is a very important definition and that definition is called Hausdorffness. Hausdorffness. Hausdorff was the name of a mathematician and he pointed out this condition as an important condition to be placed on topological spaces. So the definition is a topological space x now remember henceforth we are not going to write x comma t we are simply going to write x so topological space is hausdorff if 
for all x y belonging to x there exist open subsets u and v in x such that x belongs to u y belongs to v and anything else yeah what else u intersection v is fine intersection u intersection v v is empty okay. is equal to 5 yeah so intersection is empty otherwise yeah. there are always open sets one contains x another contains y namely all of x that's an open set containing both but these are disjoint open sets so let's draw a picture because this picture is what motivates the whole idea of hausdorffness so here's my topological space here's my topological space here's a point x and here's a point y and the two open sets i am going to draw in two different colors one open set is this this is u and the other drawn in the other color is this this is v and you see that is joint x is here and y is here okay if you can do that then that space is hausdorff of course given any definition you should give examples and non examples so example a very important example is any metric space but of course i i have not said something which somebody else was prompting me hmm? one of you in a voice was telling me something so that i should i should say here with x not equal to y one of you was saying something one of you was saying this but you didn't persist and i got distracted with something else okay so if x was equal to y there is no chance of this join open set so obviously you need two different points with x not equal to y okay okay so any metric space is hausdorff and i want to know what is the proof so i take x y belonging to x so this metric space metric i'll write as d x not equal to y what does it mean about x distance between x and y yeah what can you say therefore this distance is strictly greater than 0 strictly greater than 0 so now i take a ball around x so let me call this distance as r and if i take a ball of radius say r by 2 open ball then its intersection with the ball y r by 2 is empty now this is like you know coming very close to each other these two balls you may be worried that oh they are coming very close but they are not going to share a point because a point exactly at distance r by 2 is not in the open ball if you are worried about coming too close and you want to remain far enough you can say take r by 10 why not intersection b y r by 100 this is definitely empty yeah now you are taking very tiny balls Okay, so every metric space is Hausdorff. So we have plenty of Hausdorff spaces. All your study of metric spaces was about Hausdorff spaces. So now the question is: Are there non-Hausdorff spaces? Does there exist a non-Hausdorff space? Yeah, so somebody quickly give me one. X with one of you, one of you, one at a time. Any one. Bolo. Sir, X with indiscrete topology. Will that always work? Any X with indiscrete topology will that work? 
No sir, non-empty, non-singleton. Non-empty, non-singleton. So what is the smallest such set? Non-empty, non-singleton. Two. Two points, yes. Okay. At least. Two you points. see, the definition of Hausdorff involves two points. Therefore, if something is to go wrong, there should be two points. This x not equal to y. So try to be minimal always. So take a space x whose underlying set has exactly two points. X not equal to y. This is of cardinality two. Hmm? For example, zero and one. And now define topology to be in discrete topology. Open sets are empty and x y. These are the only two open sets. So x and y do not have disjoint open sets. X is only set open set in which x is contained is everything. Only open set in which y is contained is everything, and their intersection is again everything which is non-empty. So this is not Hausdorff. Let me give you a more interesting example, another example. This is again a two-point set, x equal to let's say zero and one. But this time I am going to put the topology differently. T equal to empty set I have to have, all of x I have to have, and I'll put one more as open. This is not Hausdorff. Okay. In this, this zero is an open set. But one is not an open set. The only open set containing one is everything. While the singleton zero is an open set. So this example occurs very, very often. Important example. Example in number theory. Slash geometry. This example is a very important example. It is a discrete valuation ring. Have you guys heard the name of a discrete valuation ring? Some of you at least. Koi hai kya? Jisne naam suna hai discrete valuation ring. Nobody. Okay, all right. Doesn't matter. We will go on. At some point, you will study this. So I have defined for you an outdoor space. And now I'm going to give you a very, very enjoyable exercise. Exercise. But before giving you that exercise, I have to introduce the diagonal. Okay, here goes. Diagonal. Okay. So let X be any topological space. To begin with X, any set. Set. Let's do sets. You guys still have need practice with sets, so let's begin with a set, and let's take the binary product of x with itself. Okay. So I have x cross x, and it has two projections, p1 and p2. And how does it look? This is x. This is also x, and then x cross x looks like this. Okay, this is how x cross x looks like. This is x cross x. Any point here is of the form x1, x2, where x1, x2 belong to x. Now, in this, there is a very special subset that's called a diagonal, and I am going to paint that diagonal in red. This is called the diagonal of X. So somebody give me the definition of the diagonal subset. Yeah, bolo. X comma X, where X belongs to X. Or you can also write it as a set of all X1, X2. Belonging to x cross x, c 
such that x1 equal to x2. Okay. You can also write it as you can write it as the set of all z belonging to x cross x so is that p1 z equal to p2 z is it clear all these are defining that same set diagonal yeah so now tell me in cartesian coordinates suppose i take x equal to r then exercise r cross r is r2 sounds silly right but you know it's still an exercise so yeah so let me go back and say now i'll do it for topoidal spaces now i'll do it for topoidal spaces so again i have this delta x subset in x cross x now this is topo x is a topoidal space this is a topoidal space and this is a subset of a topoidal space so this exercise says this is a topological space this is a topoidal space and this is a topoidal space with euclidean metric Uh, take the metric space R two with Euclidean metric. Take the underlying topological space. On the other hand, take the product of two copies of R, and then that's the same topological space. Meaning this triple R cross R first projection, second projection is R two with first projection, second projection. I suppress the triples in this. Okay, what is the reason? You know, as a set R cross R is this R two. You want to know whether the topology is the same. So here the basic open sets are going to be rectangles of this type u cross v. U cross v are going to be open sets here. And here, if I put the Euclidean metric, you know the basic open sets are going to be balls. And you know these rectangle open sets and this ball open set generate the same topology. That's why this is the same as this. Okay. So now my question to you: This delta x, which is sitting in x cross x, in the case of R two, what is this subset? It's a line. And what's the equation of the line? So y equals to x. Y equal to x. And is this closed? So we never introduce the word closed, but you know the definition. X is a topological space. C is a subset. We say C is closed if X minus C is open. So my question to you: Is any line closed in R two? Bolo. Yes, it is. No, yes or no? Loudly. Yes. Yes. Great. What's your argument that any line is closed? So one can give many arguments. One can say that here is my R two, and now here is a line L, and I want to show show L is closed. So what should I do? Its complement is open. So I take a point P, which is not there, to show this P complement is. of the line is open i want to show there is a ball what ball should i take well there must be some distance to this line that distance let's call r now take a ball of smaller radius take b of p r okay this is an open ball and any point on l is at a distance r or more this is the perpendicular there therefore this ball is only outside so this ball is entirely contained in r2 minus l therefore it is open sounds like a nice geometric intuitive clever argument but i'll make a better argument this line after all if i remember the definition is defined by some such equation 
ax plus by plus c equal to 0 is defined by some such thing where not both a b are 0 okay now my simple claim is from r2 there are two continuous functions one function is the first projection second function is the second projection and this sends x y to x and this sends x comma y to y so x and y are continuous functions on r2 agreed they are just the projections now if i have two continuous functions if i need two continuous functions so a times x is continuous yeah so a times x and b times y are continuous functions these are functions going from r2 to r if i take two continuous function if i take a continuous function and multiply it by a constant it's still a continuous function and now i add those two functions is continuous and similarly ax plus by plus c is continuous if i take a continuous function and add a constant that's again a continuous function so this function is continuous and what is l so if this function is f this l equal to f inverse of zero where f is the map from r2 to r which sends x comma y to ax plus by plus c okay clear because li line is where this function takes the value zero so x comma y goes to zero means it's on the line so line is all those points which go to zero and now zero is closed in r or r minus zero is open and you will like me perhaps to put such curly things there uh -huh. and now what is f inverse of r minus 0 that is r2 minus l yeah r2 minus l is where this function takes a non zero value l is where this function takes the zero value so is the inverse image of this open set and since f is continuous inverse image of the open set is open so we have proved it so i have shown you two proofs one proof makes an appeal to your intuitive direct understanding of euclidean geometry of the world around you second refers to the category of topical spaces the meaning of product these projections are continuous blah 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 etc and appeals to a definition of a line in the first one i never defined a line for you i i took it to be intuitively known right and while here i precisely defined what is meant by a line something locus of a continuous function being zero So have you understood both these proofs? Why complement of a line is open, and so line is closed. Yeah. Clear? Yeah? Yes, sir. There, yes, sir. Yeah. Therefore, in particular, in particular, the diagonal of in R two is the line y minus x equal to zero as one of you answered. Therefore, this is closed. And now comes the most interesting, most important exercise. It says exercise. Show that the following statements are equal. one so this is for a topical space huh? let x be 
uh, topological space. One, X is Hausdorff. Second statement is diagonal X is closed in X cross X. So you see the diagonal line Y equal to X was closed because the real line is Hausdorff. After all, it comes from metric space, so it's Hausdorff. And that's why it was closed. There's a very simple reason why the diagonal line is closed. That's because R is Hausdorff. And the first statement and the second statement are equivalent. Let me give you a third statement equivalent to it. Three, for any topoical space, W and a continuous map, map F from W to X, the graph gamma F, which as you know, something sits in the graph is closed in W cross X. So I must remind you what is meant by graph. So here is W, here is X, and here is W cross X. And the graph looks something like this. This is the graph of G. Yeah, this is how graph of any function looks. This graph is the set of all pairs W comma X. So that W belongs to W, X belongs to X, and X is equal to G of W. That is what is meant by graph. Yeah, everybody knows what's a graph, right? Right from your 12th standard or even earlier. So the third condition is given any W and any map into X, the graph should be closed in W cross X. These three statements are equivalent. And number two is the most useful among these. Number one, in terms of points, pairs of points not equal to each other, neighborhood, whatnot, is the ancient definition. This number two definition has a special name. It's called separatedness. Separatedness. So Hausdorffness is equivalent to separatedness. Okay. So now <clears throat> I want to see. Tomorrow I am going to introduce quotients. Okay. But today let me go very slowly and give you an inkling of why these are two. You see, the exercise involves you are solving it. Okay, but I am going to very rapidly sketch the proof orally and I am not going to write anything so that you understand what's the idea and then you write down the full, the entire proof in your own words. It's always a very good practice to write down proofs because as you write down, you realize there is a gap in your argument if there is one and so on. So no proof is a proof till it is completely written down. Okay. So let's look at the equivalence between 1 and 2. Why do you think 1 and 2 are equivalent? So this is where you'll have to use the definition of the product topology. Okay. In terms of open sets, X, the first definition Hausdorff is in terms of open sets. The second definition is in terms of binary product and its universal property and the diagonal map and whatnot. Yeah? So let's describe the diagonal map in a very universal manner. Here's for any x, x is 
any object in any category and suppose c has the product x cross x p1 p2 so you know lots of categories in which there is this binary product for example x may be a vector space in the category of vector spaces and then x cross x is v cross v or v direct some v with those two projections or this may be a group or this may be a commutative ring or this may be a topological space or this may be a set in all of those there is binary product there are some other categories in which there is no binary product as we saw the category of metric spaces with distance preserving maps if x is some large enough metric space with more than two or more points there won't be a binary product but okay suppose there is a binary product see the diagonal is a very general thing because once there is the binary product and the binary product comes with these two maps p1 going to x and p2 going to x now given any other w and a map to x and a map to y there is a unique map to x plus x so do i know anything which has a map to x well x itself why not take this identity x take this identity y identity x and therefore there exists a unique map like this so that this commutes and this commutes and what is this map yeah this map is called a diagonal map the diagonal map of x okay so you see this diagonal map is a feature of any category in which there is this product once there is such a product i can draw this picture i have the identity map here i have an identity map here so there exists a unique map from x into x plus x and now in the context of topological spaces so in in top in for example top diagonal x will send any small x to xx because wherever it goes this small x will go to small x itself so wherever it goes its first coordinate is x and similarly second coordinate is x so this is so in topological spaces in an arbitrary category there are no such elements okay so here's a little warning in an arbitrary category the objects may not have have an underlying set of elements so this is a complicated issue what what about categories in which in other words they are not in you know, a points so to say and they occur all the time in number theory and algebraic geometry in algebraic groups there are these categories coming up which don't have points okay don't have enough points all right so this diagonal is a very general aspect of things and now coming back in our situation we are saying that diagonal being closed is what is all dot and so i am going to rapidly draw a picture picture goes like this so this is x this is x and this is x cross x and the diagonal is going like this this is the diagonal of x now i take a point i take a point x not equal to y okay x not equal to y x y belongs to x which means the point x comma y somewhere like this it doesn't lie on the diagonal which means x comma y okay i have to switch on my battery one moment <clears throat>
So this point x comma y does not belong to diagonal. This is what it says. Now you take, you are told that x belongs to u, y belongs to v, and u cross, sorry, u intersection v equal to mp. So how will u cross v look? u cross v will look like this. This is u cross v. Because u cross v intersection with diagonal of x is equal to u intersection v. I am going to put this little formula. Well, perhaps I should highlight it. I am going to highlight this formula. So this shows that u cross v does not intersect the diagonal. So here's an open set around this point which does not intersect the diagonal. Therefore, the complement of the diagonal is open and therefore diagonal is closed. Yeah. All right. So I have told you how to go from Hausdorff to diagonal being closed and you work out the other implications and solve this exercise. So I'll stop here.